Now let's go to your book, uh, the Book of Innocence, my friend. What was uh, the focus of the new vision of self and life in the Book of Innocence? You know, I never know what the books are. I didn't even know what the title of this one was until they, <laughs> they delivered it. And then I was surprised because they'd been teaching presence in being, presence in being, and I was still grappling with what that was. And then I said, and here is the Book of Innocence. And I was like, what the is that? <laughs> but they say that there is an aspect in all of us, which they call the monad or the divine self. You can call it the Christ within if you want. You know, there's a term for it, I suspect, in every sort of spiritual teaching, but that divine spark. They say that that part of us is beyond the idea of separation, does not exist there. And it's also beyond sin which is something that they've never talked about really in their teachings, but the idea of sin as the denial of the divine, and that's really all it is. So the part of us that is innocent, truly innocence, is source. And that is the aspect of us that's seeking reclamation through us. And that doesn't mean, I suspect, what you would think of as you know, sin or, you know, they say blasphemy, if you want to use that word, is the denial of the divine, which is basically not a religious teaching at all. It's just saying God can't be where that terrible thing is. You see, the denial of the divine, they say, is the problem that we have. And the more that we deny the divine, and in fact, when we're encouraged to deny the divine, God can't be where that horrible thing is, we end up sort of exacerbating the darkness and not being the light and bringing the light to that. Now, you know, they've said that like prayer is the, is, is, is the seeing of the presence of the divine where it has been denied. It's not when somebody says, oh, well, well wishes and prayers for the victims as if it's a platitude. Prayer, they say, is an act that one does where you are reclaiming the divine where it's been denied. It's bringing the light to the darkness. And they say that actually has affect. It actually transformed things. The book that they just finished teaching is all about how matter is altered through this kind of work, you know, how the world changes through it being reseen and giving an opportunity, giving it an opportunity to to be what it was. So in some ways, what we're doing in this book is we're reclaiming who we are, being reclaimed as who we are beyond what we thought or what we thought our history was. And they're saying that's happening at, a, at an enormous scale. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at it this way, everything that I look around the room and see was probably named by somebody else. Like, that's what a chair is. That's what a window is. And all of these things are really structures. And the structures are made up, they say, of the same stuff, which is source energy at a lower level of vibration. The lifting of this thing is moving them beyond what they were called or how we thought of them. How we thought of the bad marriage and what made it bad or how we thought of that terrible thing that happened when i was nine years old that seems entrenched in my psyche the reclaiming of memory itself isn't about deciding that things didn't happen or pretending things were not so it's bringing the presence of the divine where it was denied and that's what they say alters everything i don't know if that made sense but that's the gist of it so how do the guides talk about transcending our limited understanding of this world in general? Well, that's a good one. You know, they work with these attunements. And one of the attunements, I know who I am, I know what I am, I know how I serve, they say is invoked by the divine self or the monad. And it is this aspect of us that reclaims everything. But the, the claim that follows that, again, claim by the divine self is the claim, I am free, I am free, I am free. Now, if you want to think of this as just words or jargon, it doesn't mean much. But if you understand what's actually happening, the divine self, that part of you or me or everybody, you know, that knows who it is and what it is and how it serves, or the God within is free and knows itself as free and is consequently not bound by the architecture or the structures that we've invested in or we were told to buy into. The guides say nothing gets claimed in any any kind any form of manifestation nothing is claimed until it's first claimed as a possibility but all we know we know through our experience as 
the personality structure. The personality structure knows itself through historical data, where you grew up, what church your family went to, or you know, mm -hmm. what, your, what your teachers said you were good at or not. All of this information that we compile and we operate through, and all of that stuff is sort of born through this lens of separation. When you begin to align to the higher, and the claim is a simple one, I am in the upper room, you know, and which is a simple claim. Again, it's the divine self announcing itself where it expresses, things begin to change. And they begin to change, I understand, because the aspect of you that knows who it is, is now being given sort of free reign to claim itself through all aspects of us, including the aspects that define ourselves through limitation. You know, I was always this way, it's always going to be this way. The world was always this way, it will always be this way, which is, I guess, somewhat nihilistic. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the possibility for the new must be claimed first before things change. But I don't think we're pulling ourselves up by our bootstraps. I mean, I guess I'm a believer in grace at a certain level, you know. Um, and I know when I was 25 and I hurt badly enough because I was a bit of a drunk, and I prayed for the first time, and I've been raised an atheist, and I heard a voice telling me what to do, and I listened to it. That was kind of grace, but I did ask for the help. I did make myself available to something. And I do think that free will is honored. But if the will that we have is sort of offered in a higher way, you know, and we become willing to know who we are beyond what we were taught, or how to talk to be in fear, or who to be fearful of, or how the world should look, we get something much, much finer. So many teachings out there, I think, about manifestation or about getting stuff. You know, I want to have a bigger of this, I'm fancier that, you know, because, and that's what the small self or the personality self was taught to aspire to. But the God within or the true self, I believe, actually knows what we need, and it knows what we need both at a level of personality, personally me, Paul, Alex, anybody, but I suspect also understands what we all need. And if we can move to that level of potential, we can begin to honor each other. And then I think everything starts to change. And that's what the guides have said happens. But as long as we're trying to hide our crap under the rug, it's not going to, nothing, not much is going to happen. So with this specific teaching, Paul, how have you applied it in your life? Because you have said an atheist and, yeah. and you know, we're skeptical of this whole thing yeah. for a long time. Uh, and and to, even to this point, even to this day, you're just like, I don't know what's going on. I'm just here. Yes. How does that work for you in your life? Well, you know, differently than it used to, I have to say. Mm -hmm. um, my spiritual journey is an odd one. And I don't feel that I've arrived, and I certainly wouldn't walk around saying I was awakened or enlightened. I've done a fair amount of work now, and I'm not done, and there's more to do. But I don't think of it as work, I think, in the way that I used to. I think of it as an unfoldment of life, and that the lessons come through the willingness to be present for them. Um, I'm living a life right now that I would not have imagined myself living, and I do know that. Um, even 10 years ago, I wouldn't have imagined it. So I work with the energy of the word in practical ways. Um, and I'm working with the guides a lot as a channel, which means I'm basically taking dictation all the time. I don't always say that I'm their best student, but I'm not a bad one because <laughs> I've integrated a fair amount of this now. And I know where I stand in my way and where I'm stubborn and you know angry that i don't have a partner yet or that you know people die when i don't want them to die and you know things happen in the world that i think are just horrible to see i have all those human responses still but i'm having a very different experience i'm i i it's all i can say you know i mean a lot has changed i'm about 100 pounds lighter than i used to yes. be i look yes, about you, are, you look great I'm 10 years younger i feel better you know, but it's not just that. It's mostly I've come to an awareness, I think, of goodness in the world, you know, and in people that I don't know that I used to have. It's kind of that simple.
To watch the full video, click on the link below. And don't forget to subscribe.